everyone you're welcome to this channel this is brilliant minds academy and my name is emmanuel today we'll be discussing an integral topic in biology which is known as the cell yes the cell is a very common topic in biology especially for students preparing to write UTME, post-UTME, YEC, NECO, 100 level exams in Nigeria, Hawaii and anywhere else. Now this topic is very very important because it forms the basis or the bedrock of every other thing you need to learn in biology. So it is better we demystify and bring out the important points you need to know under this particular topic. We have some important contents to discuss. The first one is the meaning of cell. The discovery of cell, the characteristics of cell, the types of cell, cell structure, cell theory, functions of a cell. So, in the course of this video, we'll be discussing every point we have here and how you can utilize them to pass your exams. Starting from the meaning of cell, cell is the structural and functional unit of life. Yes, we regard cell as the basic, the structural, the fundamental unit of life meaning that without cell there is no life they are also regarded as the building blocks of life yes don't forget don't forget you remember that in secondary school you were taught that biology is the study of life is that not now if biology is the study of life and cells are the building blocks of life what does that tell you that tells us that cell forms the basics or the bedrock of biology now, when you study cell, what do you call it? It is called cytology, study of cell. Logi is from logos, which means study, and cyte, cyto, C-Y-T, who means cell. So, whenever you hear, you see that code, cyto, 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 is referring to cell, actually. Now, Robert Hook was the first biologist to, was the first biology to discover cell. Yes, we have other scientists, actually. We have the likes of Felix Dujardin, uh, Matthias Kledin. Matthias Kledin is a botanist. Felix Dujardin is a scientist. Theodor Kiwan is um, a zoologist. Then we have Rudolf Van Vickau too. He's also a scientist, a biologist. Now these scientists all performed or carried out researches regarding cell. But Robert Hooke was the first and so he was regarded as the father of cell. Yes, he did his experiment in 1665 and he viewed a piece of cork under a microscope. Then you notice that he saw structures that looks like an empty room. Not just a structure, structures that looks like what? An empty room. Then he decided to call these empty rooms cells. Yes. Though he is, the microscope he used has a very low magnif magnifying power. That makes a scientist again, known as Anthony Lewen Hook, to use a microscope that has a higher magnification power of 270 times the real size of the specimen of the species he viewed cell under this microscope and he got a clearer view now types of cell if you want to find the types of cell we have two bases yes you can classify cell based on their nuclear structure and you can also classify cell based on their cell structure or based on their normal structure what you can see their physical structure now, based on nuclear structure, we have prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. Then, based on the cell structure or what you can actually see, what makes up the cell, we have plant cell and animal cell. Now, we are going to pick these four divisions one after the other, starting from the first one, which is the prokaryotic cell. They are cells without a definite nucleus, a cell that has no definite nucleus. Now, when we say a cell has no definite nucleus, what does it mean? It means that the cell has no nuclear membrane. The cell has no nuclear membrane. Now, if you look at the image you can see on your screen, that is the structure of the nucleus that has a membrane. You can see a membrane is like a covering that covers and protects everything you have inside the nucleus. As you can see that membrane, they have holes, they have spaces in between them. We are still coming to that area, but I just want you to see the membrane there. So a cell that lacks that membrane is what we call a prokaryotic cell. And the only feature for a prokaryotic cell is not just the absence of a nuclear membrane. They don't also have membrane-bound red organelles. Yes, we have different organelles. Organelles are what you have inside the cell. 
the things you have in the cell we call them organelles now these organelles too some of them have membrane like a covering that protects them that covers them now those those organelles that have membrane are also have sense in a prokaryotic cell did you get it now so they lack a nucleus a definite nucleus they lack um, membrane bounded organelles then in their nucleic material which is their dna there is no histone protein yes don't worry you come to learn more about this as we progress there is no histone protein now what about an eukaryotic cell eukaryotic cell is the reverse or the direct opposite of prokaryotic cell they have a definite nucleus just like the diagram you saw in the earlier parts they have nuclear membrane they have histone protein and they have membrane bounded organelles Examples of such membrane bounded organelles include the mitochondria, the chloroplasts, the endoplasmic reticulum, and so on and so forth. Now, what about the second classification method, the plant cell and the animal cell? The plant cell has this feature that separates them or that distinguishes them from animal cells cellulose cell wall, chlorophyll, starch granules. Now, Cellulose cell wall in such a way that plant cells have a cell wall, but animal cells do not have a cell wall. Yes, then in plant cells, the experience of chlorophyll. Yes, those chloro- this chlorophyll is present inside the. Yes, this chlorophyll is present inside the chloroplast. Then they also have starch granules, meaning that they store their carbohydrates as starch. Now, plastids. When I want to talk about plastids, plastids are pigments yes pigments containing com- um, organelles we have different kinds of plastids we have the chromoplast the um elioplast we have the we have the chloroplast so the one that we are going to discuss is the chloroplast which contains the chlorophyll this is a distinguishing factor that separates the plant cell from the animal cell yes you can see the diagram of a plant cell here and you can see the color is greenish in color and you can also cite and locate the chloroplast in that diagram yes this is what makes up a plant cell and what about an animal cell an animal cell is different from a plant cell because it lacks those three things we talked about yes there is no cell wall you can see that the cell wall that gives that plant cell its rigid shape is absent in the diagram you have here yes animal cell has no cell wall it has no plastids no chloroplast no chlorophyll yes but it has something else that is not in plant cell and what is that it has centrioles try to locate the centrioles in that diagram try to locate the centrioles in that diagram you can see the centrioles there this centrioles is present only in animal cells and not in plant cells please take note of that now what about the cell structure what makes up the cell the structure of the cell now the cell has different it has some specific parts or some specific organelles we call them organelles yes they are specialized entities that are found inside the cell and that carries out or performs a specific function okay they carry out a specific function now the organelles are numerous and we are going to pick them one after the other starting from the first one which is the cell membrane yeah, the cell membrane is one of the organelles we have in a cell and it consists of a phospholipid bilayer along with proteins. Now, what you have in a cell membrane actually is lipid and proteins. Now, the lipid is abundant, it's more than the protein. Yeah, the lipid is more than the protein. Now, this lipid is not just lipid, it is a phospholipid um, compound, meaning that the made up of phosphorus and lipids. Now, this phospholipid structure is also a bilayer, meaning that it has two layers. That's why we call it phospholipid bilayer. Now, what about the protein? The proteins too. We have two kinds of two categories of proteins you can find in the cell membrane. We have the integral protein. We have the peripheral proteins. Now, when we are talking about the phospholipid part, now phospholipid present in cell membrane has two parts the head and the tail the head is polar but the tail is non-polar what do we mean by polar and non-polar polar means it is soluble in water or it is 
hydrophilic philic means like so meaning it likes water the head is polar it likes water it is soluble in water but the tail is the reverse it is non-polar it is insoluble in water it is hydrophobic meaning it has fear fear of water it does not like water do you get it now that is the structure you can easily see in a cell membrane cell membrane has some important functions one it regulates what enters and leaves the cell yes therefore it is acting as a semi-permeable membrane it allows materials to enter the cell and to leave the cell at the same time and at the same time it also gives support and shape to the cell yes without the cell membrane the cell will be shapeless everything you have inside will just be dispersed anyhow did you get it now so that is the major function of the cell membrane now going to the cell wall the cell wall is only found in plant cell don't forget if you look at this what i wrote in a plant cell it is specified cell wall is found only in a plant cell and the cell wall is made up of cellulose hemicellulose and proteins in a plant why in a fungi fungi to have cell wall but their cell wall is not made up of cellulose this time around their cell wall is made up of sheeting now a cell wall has three layers too it has the middle lamina the primary cell wall and the secondary cell wall the middle lamina is found in between the primary and the secondary cell wall please take note of that these are the three parts that make up the cell wall now what is the function of the cell wall or oh, okay let me go back and give you what you need to know about primary cell wall secondary cell wall and lamina actually there is nothing much the thing is just that in the primary cell wall we have the, cell, the cellulose present in the primary cell wall we have the cellulose in the um, secondary cell the secondary cell wall is just like where you can find some cellulose as well and hemicellulose do you get it now we have cellulose and hemicellulose there then the middle uh, middle lamina is just like a bridge between the primary cell wall and the secondary cell wall together these three parts of the cell wall serves as what in the next slide you can see the function what's their function they give shape to the cell they protect the cell and at the same time they help the cell to withstand sugar pressure but this is not the only function they also allow permeability as well just like cell membrane yeah, they allow passage of materials from within the cell to the outer part of the cell and vice versa now going to the centrioles the centrioles is also an important structure you can see in cell but like i said earlier it is only found in animal cell it is not found in plant cell now centrioles function during cell division that's where you that's when they work yes and what's their function they help to form spindles you can see spindle in that structure the those that structure that looks like a line that runs from one end to the other end we call them spindles now centrioles help in forming spindles and these spindles allow movement of chromatids yes during cell division that is when we make it of uh, that is when chromatids needs to move and the centriole will form spindles that will allow the movement of these chromatids so apart from this function during cell division what other things do they do they help to produce cilia and flagella which are used for movement centrioles are found in animal cells like i said earlier and they have one particular protein called tubulin yes the reason is because inside the centriole the centriole is a structure that contains what we call microtubules and these microtubules have the protein called tubulin Yes, we have the alpha to bullying and the beta to bullying. Please take note of that. Don't let us go deeper than that. Let's move on to the next to the next structure, which is the structure for movement, the cilia and the flagella. The flagella is an organelle. It is made up of proteins too. Yes. And the proteins can either be flagellin or microtubule. If the protein is flagellin, that means it is a prokaryotic cell. But if the protein present in the flagella is microtubule protein, then it is an eukaryotic cell but what is their function both flagella and cilia they have the same function which is what movement not just movement of the organism from one point to another they move they, they also help to move materials from the surrounding into the cell for example when it comes to feeding some of these organelles um, organelles are useful for feeding they help to bring in food they help to move food 
from the outer part into the gullet of the organism and the likes. So going to the next part, we have the chloroplast. Yes, we have discussed a little bit about this. And the chloroplast, like we said, is a double membrane structure. Take note of it, it has its own DNA. Yes, it has its own DNA. And it is found in plant cells only. It is not found in animal cells. What about the structure? What else can you see in the structure of the chloroplast? The structure of the chloroplast is in the next slide. It has a thylakoid membrane. It has an inner membrane and an outer and an membrane. Yes. This membrane encloses a gel-like matrix called the stroma. This is where photosynthesis takes place. Yes, although we still have types of photosynthesis like the light stage and the dark reaction stage. The chloroplast is the site for photosynthesis and that is why we call it the kitchen of the cell. Yes, you know you cook in the kitchen where your food is being prepared. The food of the cell is also prepared in the chloroplast. I'm sure you know the meaning of photosynthesis. Yes, the process by which green plants manufacture their food directly from sunlight using chlorophyll 2 which is a pigment and sunlight energy from the sunlight as well now this is the structure of the chloroplast you can see the parts labels you can easily see the stroma you can see the granome as well the stroma and the granome are the respect as are the sites for the dark stage and the light stage respectively let's move on to the next part which is the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is made up of three things basically we have the cytosol we have the organelles and we have the cytoplasmic inclusion now the cytosol is like a gel-like structure yes that you have in the cytoplasm and it contains some metals yes it's just the the, the gel-like substance you have in the cytoplasm that is what we call the cytosol then we also have the organelles, meaning that all these organelles we've been talking about, they are found in the cytoplasm. We've discussed about chloroplasts, we've discussed about centrioles. These structures are found in the cytoplasm. Then we also have cytoplasmic inclusions. These cytoplasmic inclusions can be granules, yes, they can be granules, starchy granules, carbohydrate granules, and so on and so forth that are present in the cytoplasm as well. Now, cytoplasm is made up of 80% of water. Then every other thing you have will make up for the 20%. Then it is colorless and it is the site for major metabolic reactions, enzymic reactions, cellular reactions that takes place in the cell. One important part is cellular respiration, the glycolysis. It takes place in the cytoplasm. Take note of that. That's an important point for your exams. Now, I decided to give you a hint here, or a note you need to take note of. It is very, very interesting. Protoplasm. Protoplasm is the cell. Yes, the cell is called the protoplasm. Or the cell itself, or the living part of the cell, we call it protoplasm. Now, this protoplasm is made up of cytoplasm and nucleus. Yes, cytoplasm on the other hand is made up of cytosol, organelle, and cytoplasmic inclusions. We've discussed about this. The nucleus is also divided into nucleolus and chromosomes. The chromosome is also divided into DNA and histone proteins. Wow, you can see the, see the trend. Look at the trend. Look at how it moves from the protoplasm, which is the full cell on its own, to the DNA and histone proteins. Okay, let's move on to the next part. We have the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is made up of three different parts yes we are going to talk about the microtubules the microfilament and the intermediate filament what is their function shape support shape support at the same time production of movement organelles too cilia flagella they help in the production of all these things then their major function is support the only difference between the microtubules, the microfilaments, and the intermediate filaments is the kind of proteins that you have there. In microtubules, you have tubulin. In microfilaments, you have actin. You get now. Intermediate filaments also contain some little proteins that are present in the cytoskeleton. All these, they same, they give the same function: shape of the cell, supporting the cell. 
and so on and so forth. You can see the diagram of the, cyto of the cytoskeleton here. They give shape and mechanical support to the cell in case deformation. Alright, so we are moving now to the endoplasmic reticulum and in this case we have two types. Yes, the smooth and the rough. Now how do you differentiate between the two? We differentiate between the two using the presence or the absence of ribosomes. I'm using this medium to, to explain ribosomes as well. Ribosomes are found on rough endoplasmic reticulum. Yes but they are absent in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough one has ribosomes attached to them. The smooth one lacks ribosomes. And what is their function? The rough is involved in protein synthesis, while the smooth is involved in lipid synthesis. Synthesis means production, production of protein, production of lipids. Yes, if you look at the structure here, we have both the rough and the smooth. You can see the rough first at the top. You can see those dots attached to it. Those are the ribosomes. And what is the function of this ribosome? Protein synthesis. So I've used I, 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 I have used this medium now to explain the function of ribosomes in relation to rough endoplasmic reticulum. Yes. This endoplasmic reticulum has some structures called cisternes. Now it is this cisternes that enables it to carry out transportation. Yes. Take note of it, it is not just any out transportation, it is intracellular transportation, meaning that transportation within the cell. For example, the nucleus wants to send something to the cytoplasm. Yes, something is going to carry it, something needs to transport it. That is the function of endoplasmic reticulum, as long as it is still within the cell. Are you with me now? Let's move on. We have the second part, which is Golgi apparatus. This one is now performing the other function. If endoplasmic reticulum is carrying out intracellular transport, then this one carries out intercellular, meaning that it transports materials from one cell to, the, to another cell. Yes, it can transport material out of the cell and back into the cell. Yes, they are flexible. We call them, we call them Golgi apparatus, or we call them Golgi body, or we call them Golgi complex. Now, this is an organelle that is what responsible for the packaging of macromolecules yes, so that they can be sent into their site of action. Now, this Golgi apparatus, like I said, they transport materials but at the same time, they also produce materials too. They produce some organelles too. For example, they produce the cell membrane, they also produce the lysosome. Yes, lysosome. Most importantly, the lysosome. It is very very important for you to know that lysosome is produced from the Golgi complex instead of that. Now let's move on to lysosome. Lysosome is also a membrane bound organelle. Yes, it has something, it has hydrolytic enzymes. Hydrolytic enzymes meaning that enzymes that can dissolve the outer shell of a, of a, of a substance. These hydrolytic enzymes cause the degradation of macromolecules meaning they cause the breakdown they break down things they break down unwanted organelles yes and that is why we call them suicidal bag of the cell suicide is when you when a person kills his or herself right now lysosome can destroy the cell when the cell becomes old yes leading to the death of the cell we call it autolysis of the cell now this is a function of lysosome and that is why it is called the suicidal bag of the cell moving to mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah, it, is, it is called the powerhouse of the cell because it is responsible for the supply of energy. It gives energy to the cell and it also carries out oxidation of various substances in the cell. The reason for carrying out that oxidation is to release energy as well. Anything that has to do with energy, 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 that is mitochondria. Now, this energy, they do not just store them anyhow, they are stored in form of ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. They are these forms in which energy is stored in the mitochondria. Okay, the mitochondria also has two membranes because it is also a membrane bound organelle. It has the outer membrane which is smooth and the inner membrane which is folded. That inner membrane that is folded is called the cristae. Yes, it is, it is folded to 
form structures called cristae. Now, in this cristae covers a matrix. Inside the matrix, you have enzymes. Enzymes that carry out metabolic processes. Enzymes that carry out oxidative phosphorylation. Enzymes that carry out Krebs cycle in relation to respiration. Yes, respiration, oxidative phosphorylation, energy production, energy storage. These are what you see happening inside the mitochondria of the cell. We call them the powerhouse of the cell. You can see the diagram. You can see the folded portion of the crystal. You can see the matrix inside the crystal. And you can see different substances you have in the, in the day. You can see the ribosomes, for example. The major function you just have to take note of in case of your exam is that mitochondria carries out the following functions energy production, energy storage in form of ATP. It is the power of the cell. Oxidative phosphorylation takes place there. Respiration, Krebs cycle. Take note of all those points. Now, going to the brain of the cell, the brain of the cell, the nucleus. The nucleus is a double membrane structure. Yes. It is called the brain of the cell. It is called the information center of the cell. Why? Because it is responsible for controlling all the activities you have in the cell. And it also contains genetic information, the genetic information of the cell. This genetic information is what is transferred from the parents to their offspring that causes the similarities you have between parents and offspring. Everything is controlled by the nucleus, which is called the information center of the cell or the brain of the cell. If you look at the diagram, I've sent this diagram in the earlier slides you have. It is showing the full structure of the nucleus, everything present in the nucleus. Yes, the nuclear pore, the nuclear pore, the chromatin. The chromatin is a chromosome. Yes, we call it chromatin when it is not visible. Yes, but we call it chromosome when it, is, when it becomes visible, yes. Then we have the nucleus, which is the dark portion of the nucleus. You can see it very, very dark. We have the nucleoplasm. The nucleoplasm is the inner part of the nucleus. We have the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane, which differentiates between a prokaryotic and an eukaryotic cell. Now, this nucleus controls activities of other organelles you have in the cell yes growth of the cell division of the cell production of different materials they are all controlled by the world by the nucleus now we also have a structure called the peroxisome these peroxisomes are involved in the production and elimination of hydrogen peroxide in biochemical process now even from the name peroxide you can get it peroxisome so the name is derived from peroxide Apart from elimination and production of hydrogen peroxide, they also carry out oxidation of fatty acids and what and synthesis of lipids, cholesterols, most especially. Yes, cholesterol is a lipid. Now they are involved. They are involved in the production of this cholesterol in a cell. What about the vacuum? The vacuum is the storage tank of a cell, meaning that it as a sto- it, it, it acts as a storage center for nutrients for waste products for everything you have in the cell yes it has a membrane actually this membrane is called the tonoplast you can see it from the diagram here the tonoplast continue is the membrane of the vacuum that is a jam question take note of it and it has it contains the vacuum contains materials for the cell the food the the waste products and so on and so forth the cell sap if it's a plant cell and so on and so forth now these are the organelles you have in the cell what about the cell theory the cell theory if you notice it according to the slide i give you just five cell theories here these five cell theories are from different scientists the cell is the structural and functional unit of life there is no life apart from the life of cell all animals are made up of cells all plants are made up of cells all cells come from pre-existing cells they are all made up by scientists for example it was Theodore Skiwan that said all animals are made up of cells wife um, Matthias Kledin says all plants are made up of cells 
with over and vehicle sales, all sales come from pre existing sales. So, it is the research work of these scientists that, that makes us to come up with what we call the cell theory. Now, having known the cell theory, the cell organelles, the types of cells, what does the cell do generally? What is its function? The cell has all the function of living or living. That is why the cell is regarded as the simplest form part of a living organism that is responsible for carrying out life processes. You all know Mr. Nangaka, movement, respiration, nutrition, irritability, growth, and so on and so forth. These are what the cell does. The cell can carry out all these functions. Even if not all, at least most of the functions, the cell can carry them out, especially reproduction. Take note of that. So if you are asked for the function of the cell, the function of the cell is just the characteristic of living organisms, what living things can do. So guys, you have learned so much about cell. Yes, let's take this as the first part. You have learned everything about the meaning of cell, the types of cell, the organelles you have in the cell, the cell theory, scientists that works on cell, and the function. Yes, so it's very very simple. Cell is a very very simple topic and with all these things you have learned, your whole level exams is easy for you to trash. Thank you very much for watching to the end of this video. The second part will be coming out which is the cell and its environment. Yes, when that video is out, I'm going to drop it here so that you guys can learn more as we unleash every part or every important point you have when it comes to thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video to the end please don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thank you